Hello, my sweet potatoes. Welcome back. I'm Michelle, and today is day two of my nine day Japan trip. In the last vlog on day one, we took a day trip to Kyoto and explored the Gion district, Fushimi Inari, and cafes near Arashiyama. And now we're in Tokyo. It's Sunday, May 14th, and we started the day by going to Setagaya. It's in the outer west part of Tokyo. It took just under an hour by train to get there from our hotel in Ginza, but I really wanted to visit Gotokuji Temple. It's a Buddhist temple, also known as the Lucky Cat Temple because of the hundreds, maybe even thousands of Maneki Neko figurines that it has on display. It's also said that the Maneki Neko originated at this temple. Maneki Neko are like good luck charms, and many visitors purchase one from the shop on the temple grounds, make a wish or prayer on it, and find the spot for it on one of the shelves. A lot of them are even decorated with cute hats and they come in a lot of different sizes. Like look at these super tiny Nekos. It was fun coming here and experiencing a sea of cats just staring at you. Then nearby is someplace I've been dying to come to. It's called Shirohige's Cream Puff Shop and they sell Totoro shaped cream puffs. My Neighbor Totoro is my favorite Studio Ghibli film and it has been ever since I was a child. The interior of the shop is decorated not only with items from Totoro but also Kiki's Delivery Service, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Spirited Away, and Ponyo. They even sell Totoro cookies and I bought a whole bunch to give as gifts. The only thing is that there was a long line. We had to wait about 30 minutes before we were finally able to order. They do also have a restaurant upstairs that serves real food too, but there was a long wait as well, so we just stayed downstairs and did takeout. Once we got to the front, they were already out of custard and matcha cream, and it was only like 11.30 at this point. So if you want to try those flavors, make sure to go extra early. They only had strawberry and chocolate left, so we got one of each. It felt illegal biting into such a cute Totoro cream puff, but it was delicious. I usually don't like strawberry unless it's the actual fruit, but I actually prefer the strawberry cream over the chocolate one. The inner child in me was so happy. Then we made our way back to the city and stopped by the Pokemon Center in Nihonbashi. We wanted to eat at the Pokemon Cafe, but when we tried to make reservations months ago, they were all booked unfortunately. So we just looked around inside the store. There was so much cute stuff. I actually thought it would be bigger though, so we didn't end up spending too much time here. After that, on our walk to the train station, we stumbled upon a Starbucks that had signs for a drink we had never heard of, the Melon of Melon Frappuccino. And if you know me, you know I love honeydew melon, so we had to try it, and oh my god, it was the best frappuccino I've ever had. It tasted exactly like a Malona bar if you've ever had one, and it even had chunks of cantaloupe melon at the bottom, so it felt like a drink that you would get from a boba shop. I was obsessed, but also super sad because it's only available in Japan, but if you're in Japan while they have have this drink, you need to get it. Then we grabbed lunch at Egg Baby Cafe. We made a to-go order for their signature egg sandwich, which had two soft boiled eggs surrounded by egg salad and fries on the side, and this was pretty good. We brought it back to our hotel to enjoy, mainly because there was a long line to dine in for this restaurant as well, and we didn't want to stand and wait. <laughs> then we headed out again to spend the rest of our night in Shibuya. We met up with our friend Tristan, saw the Hachiko statue, walked over to the Parko building, and checked out the Nintendo store. There were a lot of Animal Crossing products, and I was so happy because it's my favorite game ever. They had a lot of cute clothing, accessories, stationery, and plushies, but I didn't really find anything that really spoke to me, so I didn't end up getting anything. We also checked out the Pokemon store and a couple other stores nearby, and then we decided to make our way to dinner. On our way, there was a Starbucks that overlooked Shibuya Crossing, so we stopped by so we could capture this iconic view, and it was really cool since it was raining and everyone had their umbrellas out. So for dinner, I wanted to go to Gyukatsu Motomura, but the line was long and we didn't want to wait in the rain, so we checked out Kura Sushi instead. But again, the line was really long, so we took a train down to the Kura Sushi in Shinagawa instead. There was a much shorter wait here, maybe like 10 minutes. Kura Sushi is a revolving sushi restaurant, and they do have it in the US, but I've never been to one. Plus, the ones in Japan are way cheaper anyway, especially with the conversion rate right now. Almost everything was 132 yen, which is only around 94 cents, so it was really cheap and the fish quality wasn't bad either. 
You order through this device or you can just wait to see what comes around on the belt. If you place an order, it'll shoot out on the belt and you can just grab it. And when you finish five plates, you insert them into this slot and a little animation pops up on the device. And at the end, it tells you if you won or not. It's totally random, but if you win, you get a little capsule toy. Kyle was the only one out of us that won and he got this washi tape. I can't remember which anime this is from, but if you know, leave it in the comments. Then we grab some coolish ice cream for dessert, said bye to Tristan, and stopped by a convenience store to grab breakfast on the way back to the hotel. So that's all for today's vlog and I'll see you tomorrow for day three, Disney Sea.